You're tuning in to the Black Hollywood Live Network, featuring news, interviews, and commentary on all things Black Hollywood. Hollywood redefined. From Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is Black Hollywood Live This Week, featuring news and commentary on This Week in Black Hollywood. Black Hollywood Live, Hollywood redefined. You're listening to Black Hollywood Live. And now, the host for Black Hollywood Live This Week, Dario Kristen. Hey, what's up, everybody? You're watching Black Hollywood Live this week. I am your host, Dario Kristen, and here joining me today is the lovely Courtney Stewart. What's up, everybody? DJ Jesse J. What's <laughs> up? On today's show, we have a variety of different topics, including ABC's How to Get Away with Murder Makes History. Yeah. That show is good. Yeah. I got to watch it again. I, re- I caught up. I'm caught, caught up, up, but I still feel like I got to watch it again just yeah, to like know really, really see what's going, going on. on. Too much All right. tea. Steve Harvey recruits Paula Dean. Hmm. I want to know For more what? about that. Oh. And Donald Trump sparks controversy over comments made about the new ABC show Blackish. Mm-hmm. But first, we Bobby. are going to read the buzzer meter question from last week and the results, which has to do with Blackish as well. It's which new shows are you excited to watch this season? The first answer is well, we, we put them in three different orders Blackish, How to Get Away with Murder, Both or Neither. 53% of you voted for Blackish. So that's huge. Awesome. How to get away with murder, 11%. I really? was really shocked. Really? Well, maybe like the, 11%? They, they weren't just saying that separate from Blackish, but because then we got we both. We got both. So. We got both. Okay, so then both 33%, and then neither at 3%. There you go. So. Wow, I'm still okay. All, All right. right, Blackish All right. was the All right. Blackish was good. I mean, it got it's hey, it did well as you well. You know how we do with comedies. Yeah. It did well as well. So I'm happy that that show was successful. All right, our buzz meter question for today is: Do you think ABC should change the title of their new show, Blackish? Hail to now the we now. have a topic about that today. We're going to get more into it because of Donald <laughs> Trump's comments. But first, we're going to go into trending topics with DJ Jesse J. DJ so, Jesse J. Well. We are family. Destiny's Child used to be family. And Kelly <laughs> Rowland is making a little bit of a stir right now because she had taken okay. a picture and posted on Instagram. Um, and she wrote, hashtag throwback Thursday, hashtag Donna Summer-ish, hashtag love to love ya. Now, she had also made a comment uh, in the past few months about wanting to, she would love to play Don, uh, Donna Summers in a biopic. Well, it just so happens that now rumors are swirling around that um, she's going for the role of Donna Summers in uh, Spike Lee's new film, Spinning Gold, which is actually about uh, Records founder Neil Bogart, which will be played by Justin Timberlake. Hmm. Okay. Oh. <laughs> I, um, well, I wonder how Dario feels about that. You know that. how I feel about Justin Timberlake's acting, so I'm already oh. not going to see that movie. I will buy your record, though, Justin. I will. I will. Damn. Well, and people are wondering if Kelly Rowland is going to be taken up as the role for Donna Summers. How do you guys feel about that? You want me to start? Uh, Can I go ahead and just start? So that way I started with Justin. I mean, so <laughs> I'm going to say this. <laughs> Listen. Take the flow, brother. Right. I, I, I'm not even going to focus on Justin. Like I said, I love you, JT. Love, saw you in concert many times. Love your music. Don't love you as an actor. Um, Kelly. Yeah. So on um, <laughs> yeah, so. Yeah, so on Sci-Fi this week, they've been playing Freddy vs. Jason, which Kelly started. Oh, my gosh. She and was in that. I forgot. Yes, yes exactly. Oh as you should have forgotten because her acting was womp womp. I'm sorry. I can't. I her to play Donna Summer, that makes me nervous. No, don't do yeah. it. Don't do it. Find another actress because unless she got some more skills since Freddy vs. Jason, I say thumbs down. Sorry. Sorry. How you feeling, Corey? And I love you, Kelly. <laughs> I love you, Kelly. Keep making those records, too. Love your records. Oh, man. At least someone does. Now that you brought that up, I was... <laughs> I forgot that she had done Freddy vs. Jason, but I just will say, I mean, do we remember Cadillac Records and Edith James? Oh. Let's not do it again, guys. I agree. Yeah. Let's not do it again. I wasn't even going to You look there. like her, but let's not do that again. I'm just like Spike Lee, like... I don't know. I think it's very interesting. You know, such a seasoned director selecting people like the likes of Justin Timberlake, a Kelly Rowland. Well, the Justin Timberlake thing is still debatable. Of all, I mean, he's not a superstar performer. But he's not a Leonardo DiCaprio. he, well, some people don't think Leonardo DiCaprio is all that great. So I think that of, of any of them, I can understand the selection of Justin 
on a certain level commercially and his mm-hmm. his acting is what it is i mean it's not the best but it's not the worst it's not ever. beyond it's right not it's, beyond not, it's, not, it's, it's not the and worst. he's obviously worked at it for a while so yeah. maybe he has he's gotten better yes i, will give him I think he's gotten better so i i don't i don't snuff at that very much but i don't even know that i mean is, is it really that no we don't know like, this she's is... just sort of campaigning to try yes. to get the role that's kind of, of exactly all it is yeah i think it's just you well know, girl you better well. tease your hair out next week girl well she looks like her she does with that wig on that she did in her instagram or whatever but honey just but, sing but, it okay home. i'm gonna throw this I another quick know. thing before we move on to the next subject uh, Donna Summer just exuded this sexiness, and Kelly is sexy, right? She is definitely a sexy girl, but there's something that's more, that Donna just, I feel like whoever they have to play her just is something that's more natural. To me, Kelly's sometimes a little forced. Like, Donna Summer is like that sexy, the, like the sexy, I'm not going to go there, actually. I'm just going to say this. But, but do you understand what I'm it. saying? No, huh? say it. Yeah, no, say she it. was the queen of disco, like, yeah. the, and that was part of why she left commercial music is because the exactly. sexuality of it was she couldn't deal with she it because with it, it didn't yeah. match up with her faith right so I'm which is saying, crazy because she has this elegant sexiness about it's very it. it's elegant and yeah. it was beautiful and her voice was amazing and if i could sing boo i want to do it but only because of the wigs because they're gonna be like this <laughs> they're gonna be super large Either or wigs s- and jumpsuits <laughs> that is gonna be the best it movie is. ever yeah you're right that is courtney if courtney right. can dress every single way and she had her way. I could see her in some jumpsuits. They should have got her daughter to play her, uh, who oh. was on, um, what was the show with Tisha Campbell and um, Damian, Damian Wayans? That's her daughter? That's her daughter who played the, okay, what was the show? With, with My Tisha, Wife and Kids? My Wife and Kids. So the son had the girlfriend who had the baby, right? The oh, girl who had the baby is Donna, Donna Summer's, Summer's real daughter in real life. Oh. Yeah. I stopped watching so, it by then. Now, so you know, know, she's an actress. She was decent. I mean, I don't know if she could play her mother. I mean, that's a different subject. That may be too personal, but you know what I'm saying. Hmm. I'm just throwing out some, some names. That's all I'm doing. Interesting. All right, well, hopefully besides Kelly. Kelly. Hopefully gonna be besides the movie, Kelly when the movie Rowan, comes out, I hope you Love get you, all the ratings. Uh, like How to Get Away Prove with... Prove me wrong, Kelly. Prove me wrong. How to Get Away with Murder. Murdered. Murder. The number scale uh, last Thursday. And not even just last Thursday. They've been murdering it yeah, since then. Killed it. So they got 14 million views live, which actually was a downfall number for them. But that's okay. Because they got six million more playbacks after six viewing million That's DVR. Crazy. Yes, playback. Which in total brings them to twenty point three million viewers, earned a five point eight rating. I mean, I'm sitting here like this is one of the big. This is this is the <coughs> biggest jump in ratings history yeah. for any TV show. Yeah. And that's why I'm so flabbergasted off of this. Only 11% said they wanted to watch this show. I just think that was because they combined it. So really, the I'm people that you said that. both. That could be so it. So it was probably more like half. Um, congratulations, ABC. <laughs> right? Congratulations, Shonda. Shout congratulations, Shonda. Viola. I mean, y'all did this. Because yeah. I went and watched oh, the show after it. we had spoken about it. Yes. Sucked into it. It's so, I mean, good. I feel like I, I have to watch each episode twice. Yes. And, I, and it's one of those shows you can't get up and go to the restroom. And you can't be tired. You can't be tired. I was going to yeah. try to watch it last yeah. night because I got home really late. But it's on my DVR because I DVR it all the time. And I, I was like, it's, it's too late because I didn't get home till like 1230. And I was you like, I'm a fo- I got to pay attention yeah. and understand. So, yeah. I paid attention. I still feel like I need to watch it again. <laughs> and you know what's so funny is I think it was you I was talking to about Scandal where I started watching House of Cards and it kind of made me pull back a little from Scandal because it made Scandal kind of look kiddish watching it. This show, I think it has a great balance of what Scandal brings but also what House of Cards brings. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was an interesting... Mm -hmm. It's all about Bella's walk. I will say, everybody is sort of... A lot of people are very upset with Scandal. I didn't have hope last week on the premiere, but I have hope in the second episode. I did too. Because I started to watch Scandal. I haven't finished it yet. But okay. I do have one episode, question, yeah. and I want to get the female perspective on this, right? Uh-oh. Why is it that Viola's character, though, needs to be married to the white man, and we got Scandal, and she having an affair with the white man? What's Can up with we the, have a why, conversation why, about this? Just cause why why do we need to do that? It's funny that you should bring this up, I'm because just I just got yelled at at a bar last night because a black man thought I was with a bunch of white men. I was there for a... a, a hang out with a friend and some other but all the men were white and he literally 
kept bothering me, kept bothering me. Finally, he like tapped me to bring me up. He's like, no, I just want to understand, sister. Why Why did you give up on us? And I was like, give up on who? What are you talking about? Uh, I am so irritated that men and black men have such an issue when they see black women with white men. When we've been watching y'all run around with white women. Fuck <laughs> no, 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 you're right. Oh, no, you are right. You I don't have a problem with that, though. I don't have a problem Dumb. with that. I'm you just saying. You don't have a problem with it, but then when no, we show it on fucking TV, all of a sudden, Jerry. Oh, that's it. Why is it even a question? Why is it even a question? I'm not going to talk over y'all. Why does it matter? But I mean, last week when we were talking about Omari Hardwick and his white girl, and you were talking about him, but there was no question about the female's perspective. I'm asking about two lead characters on hit shows with black women. They both are having. Two lead characters with black women. They both are having. One's married to a white man. One is having an affair with a white Praise man. And, but it's question. also it's all about affairs. Praise like it's, the Lord. it's I'm not. Tell you why. It, it be it, she's not. It be different. She's, she's married to a white but, man. Right. Uh, she's married to him, but she's having an affair. So? And uh, um uh what's key, uh, scandal? Y'all got me flustered. <laughs> have scandal. you ever had a good white dick? Uh, no, I have not. <laughs> okay. Well, when you have some good white dick, <laughs> then you'll understand that, why that's, I buy all that's, the. That's how you shut me down. <laughs> Like, I ain't got nothing to say about that child. I don't have and let's not talk about that because Viola was getting her little action and she getting had, slammed up against no, the No, you guys are missing had, my point. I get you guys no, are missing no, my point. You're saying that We're you don't not like the image that she's the having image, this affair. Both of them. Though. I think that is bullshit. The black bull woman image. Shit. I think that is bullshit. I think it is a double standard and I think it's crap. If she can be a character that's fully fat, the bottom line is the majority of people in this country have affairs on their marital relationships. Sure. Whether it's a black man or a white man, it shouldn't be a special standard for black women because we constantly see black men running around cheating, making babies, and doing all kind of stuff with white women in and out right. the other. If she's a professional woman, and she's decided that the layers of that character are that she has some kind of emotional issue, whatever, and she's decided that she's got to cheat, she can cheat with a white man, an Indian, a Jamaican, or whatever she, she wants to. She can fuck to. the Chinese delivery and I man. I think it sucks that we have to be sitting here being like, oh no. And I get where it comes from, don't get me wrong, because I'm not one of those people that be like, we need to step out of history and forget that it exists. I understand that we have this image, because the white man was the master, and the, the sexual exploits of the white man against the black I think that's where it stems from in I my brain. But I do not that. have a problem with interracial relationships I at all. Let that be known. I understand that. I don't but care. I do think that if black... I did, I would be a contradicting myself. So, mm -hmm. it... But I do think that black women get a harder rep when they're messing around with someone of another race. Because I'm just saying because there are two leads on these shows and the imaging of it, to me, is when, a little at bit... At some point, we have to decide that we're not going to make... <laughs> They're never going to just be shows where it's a normal thing that a black woman can be a lead and it doesn't matter who she's sleeping with or whatever if we don't stop question, constantly like criticizing it right. for it. You okay. know what I'm saying? You're right. So like, at some point, it would be nice, obviously, that Shonda Rhimes isn't the only one hiring a lead black woman. Which kind of isn't the case because I believe NBC is doing it on their like because uh, Alfred Woodard I believe is playing yeah, and CBS on is a doing it. show, but like as that continues to grow, the idea that you can have a relationship with whoever, whenever, and it's not about all that other stuff, mm -hmm. it'll be just very pleasant. For I hear you. Viola Davis is not going to Listen, doors. I just wanted to ask the question. That's all I wanted to do. Well, ask you know what? Question. I just funny. had that bad encounter last night, and I was like, dude, are you serious? That was a great it moment was... <laughs> to have here on the show. It was like, wow. But that's great that you have that question, because Iggy Azalea has a question. Her question is, why can't she use the N-word? <coughs> well... So, a lot of people have kind of been going back and forth with uh, whether they like Iggy Azalea or not in music. Um, a lot of people have kind of been paying attention to her social media and thinking that she's been a little too comfortable with her, as they call it, black card. Yes. Um, Chuck her blackish. D, her blackishness. Her ch uh, Chuck D, a uh, hip-hop pioneer, uh, he tweeted a photo that... Uh, Iggy had taken with T.I., B.O.B., and, uh, and uh, Drake, and she captioned it, me and my n-word and he came out to say a new straight path to slavery here comes an endorsed sanctioned corp plantation artist with a line straight out of 1853 hmm. wait what? okay basically what <laughs> like, the, you like, no, wait, I what? know it, it's Chuck D though so he yeah, always well, I'm trying to understand it though Can so basically what he's time? saying is is that here we go it's a new way of slavery okay, you I get take it. the okay, pop princess because he says that Iggy Azalea is not hip hop so you take the pop princess right. and she is the money maker she is what makes the money and these sure. you know and these guys allow her because she's in these groups it, she feels confident enough to be able to use this word so she came out to say she be clapping back at people. She do, and I'm sorry, I just feel like this dug a damn grave, but she comes out to say, so you're allowed to say the N-word because you're black, yet I can't say it. The word N 
with an A is different from N with an R. Here we go with this again. I don't have time for this conversation. <laughs> I really don't. With an A is used to describe someone who is arrogant. I don't know why it's such a problem when white people say it. My black people know damn well that a majority of people saying it aren't even saying it to be racist because most racists don't say the N word. Oh, Iggy. See. Silence. See, man, I was riding the wave. Like, when she came out, I was like, oh, God, here we go. Then I was like, Courtney, don't be so judgmental. Check it out. Maybe it's not so bad. So I checked it out. And actually, I kind of like it. And then you got to go and say some bullshit like that. T.I., come on. <laughs> For real. Come on. Like, like it's just, come on, people. Like, even if you, okay, you from Australia, y'all history's a little bit different, but don't get it twisted. Y'all hated on the dark-skinned people there, too, and messed them up. I don't know what y'all call them, but I'm sure it's something derogatory. But regardless, like, T.I., come on. Yeah. T. I. I I don't even, I'm not even giving <laughs> voice to her or her, because it's nonsense. And it's too many white folks that try to justify, like, white people can't have the conversation with themselves and have the answer. Right. <laughs> like, it's right. just, they can't. They, right. they just can't. So T.I. should have been like, oh no, boo, you can't. Mm-mm. Like, you're going to be in this lane. You're going to get crap because you're a white girl trying to trying to rap rapping. Pop but rap. at least give her, like, be like, boo, let's, let's sit down. And there's certain things just because, you know, we in America and out of respect for, you know, the ground that you are breaking and the people that came before you, like certain things just aren't acceptable. And let's not do that. Let's come up with a new name. Let's call each other. Fucker. Something. You know what I mean? Like, how about brother? Listen, I, I still, how about brother? We've, we've had brother. this conversation so many times on this show. That's too nice to call just someone. But I, bl- I blame us. Bros. I blame us because we well, should yeah, not be using the word. And you can't, it's confusion. Like, it's confusion. We can't say it and then expect other people not to say it. If you don't want people to say it, don't say it at all. And it's now this white fault. female and now, pop artist, let this bitch say that word and then a and, and it's like people's Twitter yeah. handle is going to be like, right. did it, did it, did it? Now, I'm sorry, but I was say white people are never allowed to say the word i don't care who you are you're not allowed to say it but we don't, shouldn't even be saying it among us it's disrespectful among us whether the a is at the end whether it's er and whatever I will, I will say that too uh, going back to my wonderful bar experience last night hence why courtney doesn't go to bars <laughs> but uh dude was like after he yelled at me for my dealings with the white folks and he was starting to get on my nerves and i like reached over to my friend like girl save me and the guys were over there and so one of the guys was kind of like you know Basically, the the black guy got up to like walk over to the white dude and be like, I don't know what you're doing, and but yeah, you got the girl, whatever. So the dude shakes his wow. hand, but he's calling. He's like, but y'all my niggas, my y'all my niggas. I was like, no, why are you that, on that, so many that, levels? That's wrong is on that so wrong. many different levels. It was right. the black dude calling the white dudes that his niggas. But just complained about just like, why? him taking the black. Girl. Yeah, it does. It so, it's a contradiction. I, I sat there and I was like, this is so not. Okay, it's <laughs> awkward. Like, and why? And then the white folks is uncomfortable because right, you now you just drop that word. word. <laughs> and I'm the only black girl sitting there. I'm just like, dude, that's why you need to take your drunk raggedy behind home. But anyway, and guess what? He probably go home to a white girl. No, he <laughs> said he ain't never do that. He would never, but he understands. Because I was like, well, y'all do it all the time. And he was like, I'm not one of them. I won't tell you the rest of the things that he said. It was very, very, very awkward. <laughs> very, very awkward. You can um, catch that on the BHL After Show. Which <laughs> that, is late night hosted Courtney. by Courtney. I promise you that is some After Show-ish, because ain't nobody said some of the things that that fool said. Oh, all right. I was like, oh. You was getting your life last uh-huh. night, girl. No, I was like, why are you telling me this? I don't want to know what that is. He was trying to impress you. I, it wasn't that. No, it couldn't have been He that. saw that little chocolate. He no. was like, oh, yeah. No, I, I'm a queen, though, y'all. We're queens. You are a queen in so many levels. Uh, but moving on from that, so Iggy is a... Uh, yeah. Girl, get your life. Right, get a life. Somewhere right. else. Bye. Um, I'm going to have to stop listening. You know, to this all wait. stemmed from Rod Digger. Uh, had came out and said that she wasn't a hip, real hip-hop artist. She doesn't take her seriously. She can't take someone seriously rapping about things that they don't know. Well, see, and that's I all I want to say. But that's fair. But, but, that's but, fair. But, but, has it, but, if you listen to what she's rapping about, I mean, she talks about, like, coming to the States at 16 and scrubbing toilets and stuff like that. She's not like, I was on the block shooting. Like, True. So she's rapping True. about what 
she comes from and what she knows. I know people have an issue with the accent situation, but I feel like that's not. A well, because they said that's not the way she. That's not the way she talks. I mean, but it's the Lil Kim does not talk like she sounds when she raps at all. At all, that's true. Not even close. So I just, I just like, Lil Kim of, talk like Michelle Lee. Like listen to how Adele <laughs> sings versus how she talks. Like it, it, that when you start singing and rapping and doing other stuff, like yeah, but hip hop and, and, and singing a song is two different things. <laughs> Is it really? Is it? Is it really? Because I mean, nowadays? I listen to Nelly like this I mean, motherfucker. Nelly is a country singer. Nelly for me, yeah, he, <laughs> he is a country singer. You're let's right. Real talk. You're right. All right, but we gotta keep right. it moving because, girl, did you see the clip for Roja? Real Housewives of Atlanta it's is coming, y'all. Ooh, and they done shaded Portia. Ooh, she a friend now. She a friend of the family. She is not holding a peach, y'all. No, but Kenya apparently is going to be the star of the season. With her homegirl, Claudia. And there's rumor that it might be Nene's last season. And it should be. But well, they've been saying that forever. <laughs> yeah, but this is, like, legit. That's why I think they're bringing the new blood in. Yeah. To kind of shake it shake up. Shake it up a little bit. But... Make sure you guys are checking out AfterBuzzTV.com, whatever your favorite TV show is. Real Housewives of Atlanta. Uh, as soon as you're done watching it, check out AfterBuzzTV.com, and we will be there talking about it. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Jesse. We are moving on to Gossip and Rumors with Courtney, the oh, queen. Gossip and Rumors. The bar queen, I'm apparently. Queen. I'm a bar queen. The bar queen. Mm -hmm. That's what I get for going to the women. <laughs> anyway, so <laughs> this week, Gossip and Rumors. So some of you may be watching a lovely show by the name of Love and Hip Hop Hollywood. I embarrassingly, admittedly, I do watch it. Dang it, I can't stop. But if you were watching it this week, you saw that Lil Morgan Hartman was having a little problems with Ray J. Mm -hmm. Basically, Ray J kind of called her out for being disloyal and not so great. And she was like, okay, I got you. Because apparently she was watching the episode and didn't feel so great about it. So she went to Instagram and Twitter and started tweeting stuff. And she's basically alleging that Ray J put his hands on her in front of her child and that she is not the only person Ray J has been beaten on. Mm -hmm. There's no evidence of police calling, police reports, or anything like that in terms of domestic violence in terms of Ray J, but obviously that is not a good look for Ray J at all. Especially because the whole Love & Hip Hop Hollywood thing right now is that Tierra Marie is the crazy one and yeah. beating on people and constantly, and the reason that they broke up was because she was violent, but... Morgan kind of trying to insinuate that there was some real violence going on from Ray J. And people, a lot of people say that Ray J's attitude towards women is very childish mm -hmm. and that he doesn't kind of think straight through. Like, I mean, when he came in with the clothes and the bottles and all that stuff. And I just them. thought that was just for show because it's the show, not like something yeah. he would do in See, life. See, I do think it would be something honestly, like, I think he's a child star like he can do, and he's Ray J he can do really? anything he wants in the world. Really? Kind this, of. This is why I kind of don't believe he's the story Brandy's though. Brother. I, I met his mom and we all, <laughs> all know of course Brandy, but after meeting his mother, I just don't believe That's it. That's what I said no His mama Sonya would not Norwood, play that. Sonya, just... she don't play and I just can't believe that that would be the case. But there's also commentary about him being drunk and drinking so much and that that may contribute. And, and in things, that regard, things do happen wait, when you're drunk. the way drunk. he was drunk at Hollywood Hookah on the yes. show, I was looking at him like, dude, Why are you drunk? you're like, burning the seats. Yeah. Oh. So, well, yeah, I mean. But I heard a rumor uh -oh. that Miss Morgan mm -hmm. is the violent one. I wouldn't be surprised. And I heard that Miss Morgan put her hands on somebody in front of their children. So that mm. story sounds a little familiar from what I had heard. And I heard that like a year ago. Oh, so she tried to turn so it she around. she tried to twist it a little bit. And I make see. it seem like something else. Just well, saying. if you really care, I don't really care. Like, good luck, y'all. Stop beating on each other. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> or you guys could tune into AfterBuzzTV.com every Monday and check out the after Watch show. Jesse. He gets me through my Monday night workout. <laughs> okay. I do, really? Yeah, you do. I was like, okay, y'all got 54 minutes. Okay, I can do it. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> see that motivation, people. After Buzz delivers results. It does. They do. It does. Herbalite. They do. <laughs> Who needs that shit when you got After Buzz TV? All you right, speaking crazy. of TV, y'all, the view done hit the hell of the fan already, and it's only been two weeks. So, we were already concerned that there might be a little bit of fireworks because Rosie O'Donnell and Whoopi Goldberg aren't the calmest, like, chillest people all the time when they really want to go in. Well, they went in on each other, or technically Rosie went in on Whoopi um, this past week because, I'm sorry, it's just, Rosie is kind of childlike to me. Um, she So what happened was they were discussing um, 
children and whipping and whether or not you should discipline your child whipping and Rosie was trying to get her point across but Whoopi of course being the moderator had to take the show to commercial so she had to cut Rosie off she cut Rosie off and to commercial and apparently during the commercial break the fire sparks That's what erupted I hear. and basically it was kind of Rosie being like oh my god I can't believe you cut me off I totally had a point and Whoopi was like boo I had to do what I had to do Rosie was like oh my god but that is so disrespectful to me and I how dare you and the audience was just sitting there like what is going on and Whoopi was like look you are gonna make me get upset now I done told you I had to take us to commercial break but then Rosie was like oh my god I can't believe you would do that it's just disrespectful and it's awful and then Whoopi said look bitch you gonna make me f- you up in here I had to go to commercial <laughs> So then the audience was sitting there tweeting like, oh, snap. And then they came back to commercial break like everything was wonderful and started talking about Hot Topics right all over again. So... Yes, Whoopi. Put Rosie in her There place. you go. Whoopi had to tell Rosie to calm down, boo, and called her out her name a little bit to get her in her place. I'm always going to be team Whoopi. And I mean, what are you supposed to do? We all have moderated a show. <laughs> When it's commercial break, it's you commercial go. break. You gotta go. That's you don't, money, your honey. Point, then make your point quicker. Yes. You know what I mean? And they, they, the one of the problems is that Rosie refuses to wear an earpiece, so she doesn't actually hear what the producers are saying well, and what's going on. So she doesn't okay. know time wise. Why does that's what they're that? saying? And I was like, that's insane. That makes her seem so childish. Like, come on. Well, and then the first episode, <laughs> I've only seen the first episode of the season. She had her shoes off with her... Te- like Oh, she does that all the time. She takes her shoes okay. off regularly and folds it up. And I'm on watching national television. I don't want to watch Rosie O'Donnell's sausage toes on my screen. You're funny. I just don't want to see it. You know what I mean? I want to see no one's toes up yeah. on my screen like that. I like her dynamic on the show. Like I, I do think too. it was great to bring it back, but sure. it's something is still not working for me with the show. But. Are you into it Rosie seems Perez? Off. Something seems a no. little off. I'm ready for Rosie to Rosie really Perez. go. I like Rosie. She has good moments, but yeah. I still don't feel like that that panel just doesn't work together. It's a weird me. panel. I feel like to Rosie me. Perez yeah. would have been better with Sherry and maybe Whoopi and then like mm. Hell, bring Joy back. Like I'd watch yeah. Joy some more. Like I don't know. I just it's just I don't know. It's yeah, a the, it's a weird panel. I think the they need like girl, one more person. I think they need a fifth host. They definitely need a fifth, I think. I think. And I think it's awkward too. Like they they break it down now. Like two people will do an interview, or yeah. one person will do an interview. And girlfriend, the white girl. I'm sorry to call you the white girl. I don't know your name. And I've watched the Republican almost person. every the episode. Republican. And I hate to like blame it on the Republican thing. It's not that you're really awkward. It's just weird. <laughs> well, you know what? She's so different too <laughs> from. Um, What's her name? Blondie, who used to be on the show. Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Like, they're supposed to be the same type of kind of person. Well, yeah, they're the moms and the conservatives, but... But but Elizabeth, at least, she would piss you off in a way where you would still remember her points. But But Elizabeth made good TV. She made good TV. Where the new one... I mean, maybe it's just because it's still fresh. I mean, it just aired... it's because her energy is very like this, and she speaks very slowly. Yeah, she does. And, like, I'm trying to make a point. We're like, we're on television. We move... Our brains move too fast. You're too slow. We don't like it. And that's too much slowness going on. That's why I think it's not working. But anyway. Anyway, that's not the point. We're moving on to racism, guys. And how can you redeem yourself from racism in this country? Well, Paula Deen thinks she has found herself a way because Steve Harvey put on his black man cape and came to save her. That's so good. I like that. That anyway, was perfect timing, too, actually. That was really right on point. I didn't even know what to do after that. Okay, so word on the screen is that Steve Harvey, so he has a mentoring camp for boys. And he takes a hundred boys who, you know, don't have father figures or male figures in their lives, and he takes them to this camp over this Father's Day weekend, and they get to learn about, you know, being a man and, you know, professional skills and different things. So he has enlisted Paula Dean and her peeps to teach his boys some culinary skills. And, well, black Twitter, white Twitter, every Twitter didn't <laughs> like it very much, and they're pretty upset about it, and how dare he bring this racist, horrible woman to teach these boys men who she obviously had been calling the n the word. Her and Iggy Azalea right. swimming in the they same They can do boat. a song together. Swimming in the same sea. <laughs> How dare he bring this woman? And it seems like it's just for ratings because she will make an appearance on his show and talk about it. And so people are really upset with Steve Harvey, guys. I mean, they're calling him Uncle Tom. So. <sighs> okay, here's what I'm going to say about it. I have no problem with him involving her in some sort of fashion. And then when I started to think about it, I was thinking, here's a camp where you're mentoring young African-American men. Yeah, I don't like it. I feel like if you're going to have a mentor come in and teach them how to cook, it should be someone who resembles That's them. That's what they said. What about the Neelys? Yeah. You well, they're what getting I mean? a divorce, but it's okay. Well, but I mean, they'll do things separately now. Yeah. Anthony Anderson. I mean, whatever. You just get somebody Anthony up. Anthony has in, cooking shows. Yeah, you know, somebody up in there where the kids can say, because we always talk about this, that Obama is the first uh, president where a kid can look up and say, 
I can do wow. that. Wow. I can be a president. Yeah. If you're mentoring kids, you want to you don't want to put the white lady up in there talking right. about, "Hey y'all, right. I can teach you how to make fried chicken and watermelon." Right. Right. I, like I, this ain't a puppet I show. I love you know, Steve. All that. It's a bad choice with Paula. When I read that, I was like, mm, "That's bad taste." I get it. Maybe it's like the whole rate, um, you know, ratings and spark some controversy to talk about on the show. I hate it. That's actually. why. Well, I hate see, it. I was like trying to play with it, right? But like Paul Dean's gonna be with these little kids, like. Love you, photo op. Yeah, but every time I see her, I'm just gonna think that she calling you little nigglets. (laughs) No, exactly. You know what I mean? She's calling you little nigglets. Little nigglets. Everyone grab the nuggets. The good, the good soul in me wants to believe that perhaps it is a chance to bridge over the troubled water because at some point we have to drop it and give somebody a next chance and moving on. Is this the best way to do it? I personally don't think so. But are there good intentions there? Be. I would like to believe that there are good intentions there, but if it's just a rating situation, which is what my like initial Hollywood brain says, yeah. I hate you, Steve Harvey, for that. Yeah. But I would like to believe that he's just trying to show that there is redemption and that we can't hold on to things when people are at least trying to profess their regret, their sorry. And, and yes, and, and I give you that. Whatever. We all made mistakes. And that's an important lesson for the yes. boys to learn. Yeah. So we all make mistakes. At some point, you gotta let it yes. go. And maybe, if nothing else, like seeing these children and working with these kids, maybe possibly would be a positive impact in her niglet brain. Like maybe she would think calling them niglets was really awful yeah. because these are awesome kids. So maybe it's not so bad. Okay, I, I still don't like positive it. Positive view. <laughs> it's a positive view, and I do believe that we f- should forgive. Maybe if it was Paula Dean with. A black chef. Well, she has a team, so we don't know who the team is. I'm not counting her is. team. I don't want to know who's working under I'm, Paula Dean. I'm not counting her. Maybe sure it's going to be I'm a whole ruckus. kitchen full of black people. I'm not counting her slave <laughs> team, all right? Oh, my God. You know, I'm not, because that's all I can think about with her team and this right. black uh, slave. It makes me so, so sad, because I go to her website all the time for a good listen, recipe, and now I, got I feel fat guilty. Watching her I, like, look time. at it, and I'm like, I can't cook. That is yours. If you gave her her own her cooking show you back, would, I would not have a problem with it. Her talking to black youth right now it's too soon <laughs> yeah like it's too it? soon it's too soon five she more years maybe it's too soon chicken, no. she not and they better not fried chicken maybe she, she better can... teach them how to do escargot or pan- something panko people, crusted watermelon some right. people need to learn how to fry chicken properly okay I, but don't I not, don't from Paul, Paul, Dean. not from paula dean right now does it really it's well, too though. soon it's too soon it's really good it's too soon her fried chicken recipe is really good I'm Sorry. throwing her in the vault. It's too soon. All right. Whatever. Back in the Disney well, movies. Well, she got a good wig, though. That's a real nice wig. That is a real cute wig. She looks wig. real Oh, good. that's a wig? Mm-hmm. Yeah, she always be wearing wigs. You know, I never can tell. It's beautiful. Honey, that cap right under her head. Get hey, it, girl. That wig. That is a good wig. That's man. a great mm-hmm. wig. It's a Dolly Parton wig. Yes, it is, baby. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you, Courtney. That's all I your... I we just stop. Yeah, right? I was like, do you got something else? No. That's, a, that's a, Okay. Nope. That's all right. you do. Well, we're going to move on to hot topics. Thank you, Courtney, for those gossip and rumors. But before we do that, I want to remind everyone to go to iTunes. Give us a rating and comment. Let us know what you're thinking. Let us know about uh, some of the topics we are talking about right now, The from Blackish to mm-hmm. all the way down to Paula Dean. To Iggy Azalea. Iggy Azalea. Comment about it. Let us know when we hit a topic that you enjoy or don't enjoy. Let us know what you're thinking. We have a variety of different shows. We have The Beat that Jesse host. We have Fashion 401 with Courtney. We have uh, the portraits with all three of us. Uh, and the list goes on and on. Geek Nerd Tech. But give us a rating and comment because we really do want to know what you guys are thinking about our programming for Black Hollywood Live. Please rate and comment. And Please we like rate. fives. Rate us five. Rate us five. All right. Moving on to the ER Web Story Spotlight of the Week. <laughs> I never get tired of that sound effect right there. All right, we are going to continue our conversation about racism, apparently. Uh, Donald Trump has made the news again and sparked some controversy over his recent comments in a tweet about the new show with Anthony Anderson and Tracy Ellis Ross, ABC's breakout hit Blacklist. Or Blackish, excuse me, Blacklist. Combined shows. <laughs> too many blacks. Uh, blackish. Uh, this is what he There's tweeted. Too many blacks. <laughs> I'm joking. Too many black shows, too many black titles. All right, so this is what. Pull us back, guys. What did you say? Just kidding. Uh, So, this is what Donald Trump tweeted out about Blackish. How is ABC television allowed to have a show entitled Blackish? Can you imagine the fury of a show titled Whitish? Racism at its highest level? Question mark. Now, for those of you who have not seen Blackish yet or are interested in seeing it and are kind of trying to figure out what it's all about, Blackish is loosely based off the lives of an upper middle class black family, which is starring Anthony Anderson and, of course, Tracy Ellis Ross, as a couple trying to raise their colorblind kids with a sense of racial identity. What do you guys think about Mr. Trump's tweet? 
Well, upon first looking at the title of the show, I can understand that. But then when you figure out what the title of the show is, what the show represents, and how the show does it, it doesn't... It, it's kind of like they say, you know, with the beat, if there was ever a, a white entertainment television, a white Hollywood live, things like that, you know, people... We've already had that. It's right. been the history of television and, and that's, film. But, and that's what everyone says. But the, to come out and call it that, I understand where people can come from in saying that. Because if there was a whitish show, however it would be portrayed, it would be up in... People would be up in arms. But if we're allowed to title a show blackish, there's no reason why we shouldn't be allowed to title a show whitish. How I feel personally. Okay. Now, do I think that... I think he's looking at this and using the title blackish. Now, it's kind of, in a sense, a, it's a comedy show. And using the word blackish represents what the show is trying to kind of say. So... I just think he doesn't really know what he's talking about, to be quite honest. Well, they're also saying, well, before we get into that, Courtney, what are your thoughts on this? I kind of don't want to comment because it makes me hate Donald Trump so much. It's just when I want to like him. Look, black is not racist. So to say black-ish is not racist. They're not calling it niggerish or <laughs> like... Or no, niggerish. Like, at no point, black is... What I am, I'm a black person. So to to just go off the title alone, what is racist about that? If you called the show white-ish, I would laugh and be like, "What? What is that about? What are you guys going to talk about?" Right. Actually, I would. To be honest, <laughs> unless with you. I it, was, even think it was, and racist. then I wouldn't consider it racist until I watched the show. And if it was a show called White-ish, made about white people by black people, then maybe I would be like, mm, I don't know if black people really need to be speaking about what it is to be white. Right. So if it was blackish with you know, white people in it talking about being black, then I would be a little concerned. But it's black people talking about their black experience in the United States of America. What about that is racist? I have no idea. And if you want to, if you want to comment like this, to give any credence to your comment, like I would have to believe that you actually gave a shit and you looked into what the show was. No so way. then you would be, you know, know that didn't. it's not racist. You know and you know he didn't. And you know he just posted that for... The sensationalism. Effect. Is the apprentice coming back? Well, that's what they're saying. So the rumor exactly. has it is that the apprentice is now, you know, about to start again. If well, it's, it's supposed to be on NBC's schedule, but it is not oh, officially. NBC. It hasn't officially been picked up on their schedule. But oh. they're saying that that this is all part of it's his ploy to stay PR. in the news and get He's the PR blowing again for his show. And your girl, Kenya Moore, is going to be on there, by the way. But The Apprentice? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, just throwing so that in there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I knew that would make Jesse very happy. But here's my thing. And, and, and I, I am the least racist person, right? But what I'll say this. Are you sure about that? I am very, listen, I love everybody. Because you said everybody. I couldn't have a white man, and I'm really upset. I didn't that. say you can have a white man. I didn't, you never heard me say that. Don't start those rumors. <laughs> but my thing is, is when, when I hear people say things like. smashing like, Courtney's cakes all month. Well, oh, good, I, good. I hope they were great. <laughs> I hope they were buttery and great. So Why do I got to be buttery? I don't know. You Good said cakes. I'm thinking, I'm, thinking, I'm thinking pancakes, <laughs> butter, syrup, syrupy. This is not the conversation. All right. <laughs> this is not what the point. AJ, I'm just kidding. <laughs> this is not the point I was trying to make. The point I'm trying to make is that I, I've heard this a lot from people <laughs> about certain shows that are titled with a black title or, or cer certain things that like reflect around black culture. There can never be wh whitish. If a show is called whitish, that is what television has been for a hundred years it, what what would the show be about that's different than for what we watch than, than what we've watched for all of our existence so when people get offended by a show being called blackish I, I don't even understand I, I really stupid. I can't comprehend I would like to sit down with Donna Blake what about that offends you the word black like what what is it that offends you Thank racism you. What, what's, at its ra highest. what's racism at its highest level and you know how about Donna read show? this too yeah. racism at its highest level yeah, now, I, that little hair piece went. It's right. just absurd and unnecessary, and I don't want to give any more voice to it. All right, we're not going to give Go any voice to it. We're way. going to talk about something positive <laughs> for once today. Positive. positive. We like positive. And and, it, and it's involving Obama, and it's positive. Oh, Finally, we get some honey. positive things that people are saying about Obama. All right. So the White House <laughs> has launched My Brother's Keeper Community Challenge. Mm -hmm. Now, back in February, as we know, President Obama launched the My Brother Keepers Initiative to ensure that all young men, including boys and young men of color, have opportunities to improve their life outcome. 
which was a great thing. Now, on September 27th, he launched the challenge, and this is a little bit more detail about it. The challenge calls upon mayors, tribal leaders, town and county executives, encouraging them to take the following steps. Within 45 days of accepting the challenge, local communities convene a local action summit with key public and private sector stakeholders to assess needs, determine priorities, and decide what combination of the objectives they will tackle within six months of accepting the challenge. Mm -hmm. Communities publicly launch a plan of action for accomplishing their goals, which will include a protocol for tracking data, benchmarks for tracking progress, and a blueprint for how the community will resource its efforts. This is unbelievable. I hope it fully comes I'm glad through. that this, and it, it, so many people are now getting involved with this program that mm -hmm. they're saying, uh, and it's getting mm -hmm. a lot of burn. And I mean, we've seen it grow since February, and the fact that it's September now, and they're having this challenge and getting so many people involved, and, and, and people are actually dedicating time to make sure that this is, is increasing and headed in the right direction, applies Obama right now. Oh, you get an applause, because finally, we're hearing there's so much negative things in the press about him and people criticizing him. When you do that, look at some of these programs that he's building. And this is going to make such a difference in young, urban, Latino, black, whatever it may be, their lives and how they how they will change in the future. Mm -hmm. You know, so what do you think of the challenge? I think it's great. I just wish that it would like be more. ALS spread, you know, like, uh, like how that, that that had spread so quickly and everyone was so excited to do that. You know, I wish that the attention of this, because I kind of had to like look to find this. Yeah. It wasn't like on my Twitter trending. It wasn't, you know, right. number one news topic on my web search. Um, I don't so, think it's been talked about on mainstream news. Exactly. Well, exactly. And that's that's Who what knows? I wish out yeah. of this. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. But Good I think job, it's great. Obama. Stay I think the course. Genius you know to start something like this. Obama, you've been doing some big things on your way out of this office. I hope people remember that. That's all I got to say. Things like this will probably be his legacy, and they will hate him for 20 years for everything else. <laughs> yes, you, yeah, you're probably right. That's all right, so our final story of the day. Ooh, ooh. I did this one for you, D. Oh, oh. Dearly, beloved, oh. dearly beloved, we are gathered here today <laughs> to talk about the celebration oh. of Prince's new CD. Yeah, yeah. It's a two album called Artificial Age and Plectrum Electrum. All right. Plectrum with this all Electrum. female band, Third Eye Girl. Love it. Now, this is what this man did for us this week. He not only launched and, and put out his new CD, he also had rapper Kendrick Lamar join him on stage for a special performance. And the song that they did was off of Prince's 1998 Crystal Ball CD, What's My Name? Mm. What's My Name? What's My Name? Mm. Now, he did a special, and it was at the Paisley Park Studios. It was an hour-and-a-half program that took viewers inside Paisley Park Estate, and Prince, I heard, jammed it out. I saw a clip of it online. Wait, was this the one that we had announced a while a back? When when was so. it? No, this was this week. It just happened. Yeah, it just so happened. he'd be doing this. Yeah, yeah. Sunny. At that Paisley studio. At the Paisley studio. He does it's a lot of streamed live on Yahoo. It's streamed live on Yahoo Live Nation. Uh, you can go to Prince's website if you want to, you know, become a member of his fan site, and then you are, you're able to access things. But you know, Prince, he also takes things down very quickly. Yes, he does. So the minute he put it up, yeah. and I saw it, it was like down within down. like That's five minutes. You know. It. Well, even Yahoo, uh, the clip that they ha use is like a 20 second clip. Yeah. And it's of Kendrick Lamar rapping, and Prince is in the back in the smoke, and then he just walks up to the front and goes, "Yeah," and then the clip ends. Yeah. <laughs> Don't I love man. I love Control Prince. Your stuff, mm -hmm. man. He's yeah, the man. Playing. This is this is why I give him props. That man has been legendary for since what 1977, 76, somewhere and he's there. still making good music and keeps himself a mystery and keeps yeah. himself a mystery and is aging very well. And I want to get a fro like that. Rocking the fro. Bro. Rocking the fro. Mm -hmm. Mm. All right, well, that is uh, how we're going to wrap it up this evening. Right, I want to remind everyone, though, to go to the BuzzMeter question and let us know what you think up. about this. Uh -oh. Do you think ABC should change the title of their show, Blackish? We talked about it a little bit today. We can give our answers to what we think about next week, but we want to know what you're thinking. What do you think? What do you think? Also, I want you to know where Courtney is on I Facebook and social Where media. Where can they find you? Where can they find you? Where can you find me? You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Stuart Starlet. And at the bar. Not at the bar. Not for a very long time. <laughs> that's what she Jesse, says. That's today. what she says. Right. Okay, Jesse. it might be a restaurant. I didn't say I wasn't going to drink. Y'all can follow me at DJ Jesse J. <laughs> you can follow me at 
Dario Kristen because that's on his Facebook, name. Twitter. <laughs> And Facebook and Twitter and Twitter and, and Instagram and, and Twitter, everywhere else. And Twitter. All right. So thank you guys for tuning in to this week and we will see you next week. Next week, baby. From producers Maria Menunos, Dario Kristen, Tiana Hobson, Kevin Undergaro, and the entire BHL crew, we would like to thank you for supporting Black Hollywood Live, the first online broadcast network dedicated to African American entertainment. For questions and comments, contact us at info at blackhollywoodlive.com. Like us on Facebook. Tweet us or Instagram us at BHL Online. And I'm your BHL announcer, Scipio. Instagram me at Planet Scipio. Thank you for tuning in. Hollywood, Hollywood redefine. The views expressed here are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of BHL or its owners or principals.